I want to speak to you today. I want to start doing a series on this very important subject. And I will introduce it today. It's something that I believe that everyone needs to understand. Especially looking at this subject through the cross. I want to say through the cross. I know somebody's asking, but what's the topic? Well, I want to speak to you on deliverance. Good. I want to speak to you on deliverance, but I want to look at it from the cross and after the cross. I believe that a lot of things are mistaken, a lot of things are misconstrued if you don't look at them under the new covenant. And if we call ourselves New Testament believers, then it is important that we understand what the new covenant is. It's a new covenant. It's a new testament. And that's where we live today. And all that is in the new covenant is accessible. Accessible to everyone that comes in faith. And it's accessible only through Christ. Can someone say amen? amen? So, in this series, I'll be dealing with curses. I told you that for some time, the Lord's put this on my heart, and I've been preparing this message, and I've been getting it ready. And I want to bring this message in line with the Word. I don't want to bring this message in line with popular opinion. There are all kinds of opinion that's out there, and so many Christians have imbibed a lot of lies. With regards to deliverance. Because when you start talking about deliverance. People start talking about generational curses. People start talking about family bloodline. And stuff like that. And so we want to see what the word of God says. I mean if you are ready to go on this journey with me. Some people. We want, we want to see what God's word says. I want to stay in the word. One of the things I learned is not to go to the extreme on the left. Not to, the, go to the, not to go to the extreme on the right, but to walk in the middle path. If you walk in the middle path, you'll never go wrong. A lot of people are falling into ditches. They're falling into ditches on the left, on the right, and on the left. We've got to maintain the, the path that's being laid out for us by Christ and based on the new covenant. Come on, say amen. amen. So I will approach this based on the new covenant. And if you would follow me based on the new covenant and your heart is receptive to what the new covenant says, then you will be blessed. And mentalities are going to change and mindsets are going to be changed and we're going to brainwash you with God's word. To brainwash is not a bad word. It's a good thing. It depends on how you use it. You can brainwash people with lies or you can brainwash people with truth. A lot of people have been brainwashed by lies and so we need to brainwash them with the truth. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth you know Shall make you free. Praise God. How many of you are open to the teaching of the word? Good. Because in this series, I'm not necessarily going to shout and speak and run around. I'm just going to teach you the word. I'll show you the word. We compare scriptures and verses. And you allow the Holy Spirit do a work in your heart. And change you. So I'm going to give you biblical truths. On these things and not popular opinion or human theology. There's a lot of human theology on curses and deliverance. And generational this and generational that. And some of this human theology and messages have kept a lot of Christians incapacitated. I can tell you and I know what I'm talking about. A lot of Christians are incapacitated. A lot of people are living in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
what you hear will affect you. And what has been taught in a lot of places has put fear in people. And people think more about the devil than they think about God. A lot of people see the devil most of the time than they see God. The devil is responsible for everything that's happening or for most of the things that's happening. And, and if preachers continue to perpetuate that mentality and that message and continue to push that narrative, then a lot of people will stay in bondage. It is time for us to show believers, the New Testament believers, blood washed, saved, delivered by the power of God, who they are and whom they belong to. Because as a man thinks, so is a man. If I continue to, to push a narrative to you, at some point you begin to believe it. At some point. And that's why the Bible tells us that we that are preachers and we that are teachers of the word shall be judged stronger and greater. Paul wrote to Timothy, his son in the faith, and said to Timothy, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly, rightly, in other words, you can wrongly divide the word of truth. If you wrongly divide the word of truth, you would put people in bondage. But if you rightly divide the word of truth, you bring people deliverance. Come on now, say amen. amen. So study, he wrote to him to study. A lot of people refuse to study. And the thing because they taught Sunday school and they did well with Sunday school, they are going to stand behind the pulpit and teach. Study. Give yourself until I come. Give yourself to reading. Study. Get yourself into that place where you can properly divide the word. Yes. Properly dividing the word of truth. It's very important. Or else you have a bunch of people running around with, with like a chicken with his head chopped off. You have a lot of people, a bunch of people who are afraid because of the narrative that you have pushed. And because of the way you presented the message on deliverance. In a lot of places, the message on deliverance has been presented in such a way where Christians think the devil is almighty. Can I tell you this morning, the devil is not almighty. Can I tell you this morning, somebody's going to get a revelation. Satan is not almighty. Can I tell you something else? Satan was created. Can I tell you something else? He is not everywhere at the same time. Can I tell you something else? He does not know what I'm thinking right now. No, people, people present it as if the devil is omniscient. He is all knowing. No, no, he's not all knowing. He doesn't know everything. He does not know what I'm thinking. In actual fact, the devil does not know what I'm going to eat after the service. It's not almighty. God is almighty. It's not all knowing. God is all knowing. He's not omnipresent everywhere at the same time. Only God is omnipresent. Amen. God is here. God is there. God's all over the world. Hallelujah. Come on now, say amen. We, we, and, and listen, let me tell you something else. God and the devil are not in the boxing ring. And God is not able to knock him out. And God needs the church to come rescue him. No. The Bible says Jesus made a public show of him. Of the devil triumphing over, over the devil in it. Me, I'm telling you, the, the, Jesus stripped him naked. Stripped him. Dra dragged the devil all over the world to show them, look, he's a defeated foe. He's a defeated. And I'm going to show you how the devil oppresses Christians. Why he does. What opens the door. These are the things that we shall be looking at. Get excited now. Get excited. But I'm going to show you who you are. Your, your position, your authority, your place. Come on. I'm going to show you that you, you are the one that should be running the devil out of town. Not the devil running you out of town. 
I'm going to show you that you are the one that should be running the devil out of the house where you're living. Years ago, a lady called me on the phone. I was here minding my business. She said, Pastor God, I need to talk to you right now. Did, did not even know her. Got your number from somebody. Can I please talk to you? Can I please uh, come see you? Yeah, come see me. So <laughs> I had to go out there and I met her there in the, in, in, in the restaurant over there. Out there. And I said, what's the problem? She said, objects are moving in my house. <laughs> Things are moving. And I'm not disproving that. It's possible. It, it, it happens. This stuff happened. But you shouldn't be the one running. <laughs> See, see now, see that's the problem because because this defeat mentality, this victim mentality has been pounded and pounded and pounded into the into the consciousness of believers. Now believers walk around with this defeat mentality, and they tend to exalt the devil above them. The Bible says in the book of First John, chapter four. And verse 4. Ye have overcome them little children. Notice it does not say you will overcome them. It says ye have overcome them. Why? For greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. A lot of Christians live in this tense atmosphere. Pastor God, well, I'm fighting the devil. Why? <laughs> My brother, why are you fighting the devil? My sister, why, why are you fighting the devil? Jesus already defeated the devil on your behalf. Why are you still in a boxing ring with the devil and fighting the devil every day? Looking like that's why people come to church. A lot of times they're so depressed. They come to church, they come to church, they look like they look like the whole world has come upon them. Because throughout the week they were fighting the devil. <laughs> fighting the devil. Pastor God, well, you don't understand. You don't understand. The devil came to my house last night. He walked in. And he said, I am the devil. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. The whole night, the moment he came in, I, I couldn't sleep anymore. I began to pray the whole night. Prayed. I had to pray for seven hours. That's why I look the way I look. And really, even if there was a spirit that came into the house, it was not even the devil. You must really think you are. No, some people think, some people are geniuses in their own minds. Satan came to my house. <laughs> to do what? <laughs> like. <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean Satan the devil? Lucifer himself came to your house. My God. You're very important. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lucifer didn't come to your house. It's a demon. It's a demon. A two-foot demon. <laughs> if any came at all. Sometimes nothing came. You just ate too much pizza. Sometimes <laughs> you, ate <laughs> you, you ate so much fufu before you went to bed. And have you heard the story of this man? Woke up like 2 a.m. in the night. Woke up and, and the, the, the light, of course, was turned off in the room. And when he wakes up, he began to scream on his bed. He was screaming. Oh, oh, Satan has come into my house. Say, and are you going to scream and die in, on the bed? You, you need to do something about it. So he, he summed up courage. He said, let me do something about it. You know what he did? He got up and he turned on the light. And when he turned on the light... It was his winter coat. 
he, he hung the winter coat. <laughs> he, he hung the... <laughs> He, he was the one who hung the winter coat before he went to bed. 2 a.m. he wakes up and in the dark he sees this thing that looks like the shape of a demon. The shape of somebody standing there in that corner in his room. And he thought the devil came. Turned on the light and realized it was his winter coat. As a man thinks. So is he. Because people think, why did you not think it's the Lord? <laughs> why did you have to think it's a demon? Yeah, because of the way people think. And I, I'll show you, even with dreams, even with dreams, because when you talk of deliverance, you can't really deal with it without talking about dreams and all this stuff people see in the night. I was eating in the night. They gave me food to eat. Da, 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 da. And all this stuff that people talk about. We shall deal with all these things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And, and if you need deliverance, you will be delivered. So you've heard me say, and listen, I've said this here several times, but I've not really brought a message like this to you with regards to the subject. But I've said many times, and I've touched here and touched there, but here I'm just really going to expound on this. You've heard me say many times that a believer in Christ, listen to this carefully, should not be going through deliverance. Now notice what I said Understand what I just read. A believer in Christ should not. I'm not saying a believer in Christ cannot. I said a believer in Christ should not go through deliverance. Do you understand that? I didn't say a believer in Christ may not. A believer in Christ should not be going through deliverance. Deliverance is not for the believer. Rather, believers are carriers of deliverance to the world. Come on, say amen. amen. A believer in Christ is a carrier of the power of deliverance to set the captives free. Can someone say amen? amen. So if you are a believer in Christ, you should not be going through deliverance. You may have a reason, and I'll show you the reasons why a Christian may go through deliverance, but a Christian shouldn't be going through deliverance. Is this clear? Is this clear? So you've heard me say this before, but I want, to, I want you to understand it because now that I'm teaching about this, it's important. The Bible says, and this is the reason why I believe a Christian shouldn't be going through deliverance, because a Christian is a carrier of deliverance. The Bible says you are the light of the world. Say it with me, I am the light, am the light of, the world. of the world. Okay, so if I am the light of the world, where did the darkness come from? I am either light or I'm darkness. <laughs> you can't have light and darkness at the same time. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Men do not put a candle under the table. But on top of the table that it may give light to everyone in the house. Say it with me. I am the light of the world. In me, there is no darkness. Mindset will change. And, and one of the ways to change mindsets is through the meditation of the word. Are you listening to me? Thou shalt meditate on the word day and night. 
Thou shalt meditate on the word day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to what's written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. Come on, say amen. amen. You are light. You are not darkness. You are a city on a hill. You are not a seat in the valley. You are a candle on the table, not a candle under the table. Are you seeing the reverse is the curse? Are you seeing what I'm trying to say? Are you seeing that the reverse? Because here we're seeing, we're seeing, if in a sense, positive and what? You are the light, you are not the what? You are the light, you are not the what? Okay, so the light is what? The blessing. The darkness is the what? The cursing. Right? You are set on a mountain. In other words, you are there prominent. You are there blessed. You are there lifted. You are not in the valley. Come on now, say amen. You are a candle on the table. You are not a candle beneath the table. In other words, you are where? Elevated. You are where? You are, where you are blessed. You are not in the place of the curse. Only by the word can mentalities change. Amen. Only by the word can true deliverance come. Amen. And what God's going to do on, in this series is going to bring deliverance to people as you sit. Amen. This is not probably going to be one of those deliverance services where people spin around and pull the chairs down. This, this deliverance will take place while you are sitting and listening to the truth. For the truth shall make you free. I am tired of the gimmicks and the games. Yeah. Twisting people's heads does not bring deliverance. Yeah. Come on now, say amen. amen. The lie is being perpetrated. Lie is being preached. And people, out of the sincerity of their hearts, want to help. And I'm not speaking negatively of people who preach stuff like this. But I believe it's out of the purity of your heart. I want to help. But we've got to look at everything according to the word. Amen. Come on now, say amen. amen. Not according to people's opinion or what you've heard from your prophet or from your apostle or from your pastor or from whoever. No, what the word of God says, that's what we're going to believe. And I'm a, I'm a strong believer in the new covenant. I don't take a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new and make it my own. The old is gone. The new has come. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As much as I believe in deliverance, but for the most part, the deliverance gospel has been presented in such a way where Christians go from one deliverance service to another. But unfortunately, many of them never truly get free. Because they have no idea or they have limited understanding of the subject. I won't say deliverance. deliverance. The ministry of Jesus was a ministry of the word. Not a ministry of deliverance. There is nothing like Deliverance ministry. Amen. Oh, people, I, I, do you want me to teach the word here? Or you want me to just go along with what people have said? You know, people have carved out their own portion of the ministry. My, I have a deliverance ministry. I have a prayer ministry. I have an intercession ministry. Where do you see that in the Bible? No, no, no it's people carving out a niche for themselves. Can I tell you what Jesus had? The ministry of Jesus was the ministry of the word. Amen. The ministry of the apostles was the ministry of the word. Amen. The only thing we have is the ministry of the word. We don't have the ministry of deliverance, ministry of intercession. We have the ministry of the word. Yes, we intercede, but we don't have the ministry of intercession. Yes, we bring deliverance, but we don't have the ministry of deliverance. It is the ministry of the word that brings deliverance. Amen. We, ministry of deliverance. So your ministry is just to deliver people from what? 
So those of us that have not carved out this niche for ourselves. So you mean we don't deliver nobody then? You see people going from deliverance service to deliverance service. Deliverance meeting to deliverance meeting. The whole thing, the whole time about, the whole prayer time, it's about everything that has been done. Everything that is following me. Everything from my forefathers. Everything from my da 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 da. Everything, every time you pray that prayer, when will you stop? When will you, when will you break free once and for all? Some of you would not like me after preaching this message, but I really don't care. Thank you. If you don't like me, you have to love me. You are commanded to love me. <laughs> Look at the book of Luke chapter 4. Let's see what verse 18 says. With regards to the ministry of the word, that is the only ministry that we have. Amen. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance comes by preaching the word. Amen. Amen. Look at the book of Acts chapter 6 verses 3 and 4. Wherefore, brethren... Look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Look at the next verse. If you know the story here, don't want to go into all the details. This was when the seven uh, deacons were chosen in the New Testament church. And these were men full of the Holy Ghost and full of wisdom. They were the first deacon in the New Testament church when some of the people complained that their women were left out in the daily distribution of food. So when the complaint came to the apostles, the apostles said, look, don't let us start distributing food and taking care of that business because it's going to limit the effectiveness of our ministries. Is that correct? So choose out from among you seven men. Stephen, Philip, and several other guys were chosen so look at verse 4. But we, I want to say but we. But we. Who, who is the we here referring to? The apostles, the preachers, and the teachers. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. And to what else? The ministry of the word. The ministry, it was the ministry of the word that brought deliverance to everyone that was delivered under the apostles' ministry. Amen. Not the ministry of deliverance, the ministry of the word. It is the word. It is, he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Amen. It is the word that heals. It is the word that delivers. Your word is a light unto my feet. Your word is a lamp unto my path. It is the word. It is the word. A lot of people don't want the word. Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, spin my head. Pastor, <laughs> listen. Somebody said to me, the other pastor, fast for me. I said, no, I'm not going to fast for you. Why should I fast for you? You fast for yourself. Pastor, fast for me. Are you kidding me? You want to you put me on fast? I want to eat. You, you are not the one to tell me to fast. I know when I'm supposed to fast. I make up my mind to fast. You can't just call me on the phone, pastor, fast. For what? You fast. <laughs> Fast so fast. Are you serious? You fast for yourself and then you come out pray for you. People, people come to me all the time. Pastor this, pastor that. And I don't just start out praying. I don't start out praying for people. Free! No, I don't just do that. No, I don't. Do, don't. I, I show you first what the word says. Because it is the message that delivers. Amen. Not the prayer. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, it's the message that delivers, not, not the prayer. Amen. Some, some people thought they, del they were delivered by the prayer, but they discover six months later, you were not delivered by the prayer. The thing is still there. 
The enemy only went to sleep for a while. He's still there locking somewhere. But when the truth comes. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him, without, na, 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 na. and the Bible says, in him was life, and the life was a light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness could not resist. <laughs> the, <laughs> when the light shined, the darkness could not resist. You know, darkness was, no, I'm not going, no, darkness couldn't do that. Darkness couldn't. The word is the light. The light shines and darkness could not say no. Darkness must leave when the light shines. Darkness cannot say no. Darkness has no option when light shows up. But you know, people want to focus because the easy way out is, Pastor, fast for me three days and let's pray. And no, that's the easy way. Listen, the highway is to find the word that will shine the light in you. Uh, you see now, that is, the, that is the highway. And that is the one that's not easy. That's why they tell you to go to Bible study. That's why they tell you to go to Bible school. That's why they tell you to go to Sunday school. That's why they tell you to learn the word. Because some people can't even open their Bible and read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can't open their Bibles and read it. They can't spend time in the word. They don't have any fellowship with the word. And they expect to be delivered. You can, even if I pray for you, from now till all your hair fall off. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not going to work. That it will seem like you're delivered, but you're not. Because it is the truth that sets free. The truth. I was said the truth. Only the truth. You will know the truth. And it will set you free. Should I tell your story? Is it okay if I tell your story quickly? Is it okay? Huh? Yeah. You guys are saying, yeah, this is the guy I'm asking. <laughs> Come. Don't you like this guy? Look smart, bro. He look good. <laughs> like him. Looking sharp. Walked into my office a year ago. Said to me, Pastor, there is a curse on my life. I looked at him and I said, no, there is no curse on your life. He said, what? The guy said he has a curse. You say he doesn't have a curse. <laughs> no, I said he didn't have a curse because I, I knew he was a born-again believer. And I began to show him verses in the Bible. 20 minutes into our conversation, his eyes lit up. Yeah. What has happened since then? Hmm? You're fine now. You walked out. Everything was good. The Lord began to bless you. You feel free. Liberty. Deliverance. Yeah. If he speaks in French, it'll be good. I know. I'll speak for you. So. <laughs> Amen. Look at the joy on his face now. Amen. Praise God. I could have gone, I could have gone, come out, <laughs> free, 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 free. <laughs> and, and let me tell you this, and let's say there, there was a curse, let's say there was, free, free, free. His freedom does not come by that. His freedom comes by what he knows. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's, it's freedom. It's not going to come by my prayer. Jesus came to Nazareth and couldn't do any mighty works. Who do you think you are to do what Jesus couldn't do? They had no faith. They were filled with doubt and unbelief. And Jesus just couldn't go free, 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 free. Jesus couldn't do that. Even if he did, it was not going to work. Notice the Bible does not say, and he did not do mighty works. The Bible says he could not do mighty works. He could not. The grammar there is totally different from he did not. 
He couldn't because he could not. God Almighty could not. The one who can do all things could not. The one who made the world could not. Okay? So God can be limited. Mm. Pastor God will. What, what, a, what a heresy. You just, that was a wrong doctrine. No, it's not. You could limit God. Through that. You could limit God. So here, Jesus could not do that. You know the next thing Jesus did? The Bible says he went all over their villages teaching. Because <laughs> deliverance don't come by prayer. Deliverance come by preaching and teaching. There is no ministry of deliverance that's ministry of the word. It is the word that brings the deliverance. So when this man came, if I had twisted his neck and done all the acrobatics, he would have left my office thinking I'm free. But that's an illusion. That's not true deliverance. And he's never free. He is not free. But the day he came, I did not pray. The day he came, I showed him what the word says. And the word I read, the verses I read, jumped into him. Amen. And light came. Amen. When the light shone, the darkness left. Amen. 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 And you have been free since then. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. So we, we, we're going to examine this. We're going to look deeply into this and see what the word says. And that we're going to talk about, you know, people have this. If you dream like this, it means this. No. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. There is not one interpretation for all dreams. If you know what I mean. Sam had the same dream. Victor had the same dream. Hope had the same dream. This is what it means. No, there is nothing like that. Maybe you're looking into horoscope. <laughs> you're consulting with fortune tellers. You're consulting with mediums. We don't do that. Amen. Come on now, say amen. amen. If you see yourself eating in the dream, it means this. If you see your... There's so many things they say. You see yourself break dancing, it means this. <laughs> if, it, <laughs> if you see yourself swimming, it means this. No, what are you talking about? Who told you that? What nonsense? We all have the Holy Ghost. Come on, people. Yeah. And sometimes all these things you see, you do not see because the Holy Ghost is saying anything. Yeah. You see some of these things because you haven't rested well. <laughs> You're so tired. You, you've been so involved in too many activities in the night, you go to bed and you start dreaming. Every dream is not from God. Every dream is not from the Holy Ghost. Some dream is because you're thinking too much. Sometimes you, some of you dream too much because you, you dream in the night because you ate too much. Eat little at night. <laughs> you, you eat this big, big meal and you go to bed. And you wonder why am I eating in my dream? Of course, you were eating too much. That's why you. you <laughs> Praise God. Is this going to bless somebody? So, this is introduction. I want an introduction. Amen. And we shall look into this and look at different aspects. And we shall look at, next week I believe we shall look at why a Christian needs deliverance. Amen. Notice I did not say I'm against deliverance. But I'm just saying a Christian should not, shouldn't be going through deliverance. But if a Christian has done what will put him or her in a place where he or she needs deliverance, then we're going to bring deliverance. Do you understand me? Because people do what opens the door, and now they need to be delivered. I'll finish with this quick story. A pastor's wife was watching soap opera. You know soap opera, right? No. Those things they show in the evenings where 
the husband and the wife are married, but the man is running after other girls. And the wife is running after other men. You know what's so professor? It's around that. It's just about promiscuity most of the time. True or false? <laughs> it's about infidelity. Gone are the days when we were young, when we were kids, growing up as kids, we could sit in front of the TV with our parents and watch soap opera. Soap operas then was educative. We learned the, the importance of the unit of the family, how families should be together. We enjoyed them. You, you, you did not sit with your parents and watch and do this. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. If your kids are doing this, no, we didn't do this. We were looking from beginning to the end. Everything was clean. And then they began to desensitize people with time, little by little. Desensitize. You know what I mean by that? What was abnormal became normal. First, you know back then, ladies, men would shake hands like this, right? Soap opera, shake hands like this. You shook hands. After, little by little. <laughs> you began to get closer and closer. And now, now everyone accepts it. It's okay. Because society has been desensitized. Society has accepted what is not okay as okay. You see what the problem is now? You see what the issue is now? That's the problem. So this pastor's wife was watching this divorce that, that one divorces this, this one is a boyfriend to that girl, but he's not, he's double dating with this and that. You, you see the craziness in this, opera, in this things. She's there watching, 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 watching. And then it got into her. She divorces her husband. Oh yeah, she divorces her husband. Another was watching, 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 the, and the devil came, sat one demon came and sat on her and, uh, and began to say to her, you see how pretty you are? You are, you are as beautiful as those women. And some of you, you, some of the women, I need to help you here. Don't be deceived by what you see on TV. They're not as pretty as they look. It's okay, it's okay to love yourself now. Because some of, some of you are trying to be like them. Somebody said to me, I... I I dress like that. No, you don't dress like that person. How, when, when, has the, when, when has the world become the example to the church? When has the, when has the world become the example to the body of Christ? When? We're coming back from somewhere yesterday. My wife and I, and I said, I said, look at this, that family. This girl was all torn all over the place. The jeans. I said, before we would sew these things up. <laughs> if, <you're laughs> if your jeans tears, you will have to take it to a tailor. Say, my jeans is torn. And they'll, they'll sew it. Right? Now, people buy, she said to me, people buy a nice one, they actually tear them. <laughs> cut, cut them up. Cut them up. Because we want, we want to show your laps. We want to show your laps. When you work, they need to see my laps. <laughs> and you tell me you need deliverance. Of course you need deliverance. <laughs> if you, you need to, don't you know you need deliverance like that? You need deliverance. Cut up. Someone cut up here. Cut up here. Came to church, I saw here. Cut up. Cut up. Come Church, yes. <laughs> yes. 
Guys, no, guys now don't put on belts. Some guys don't put on belts. It's right here. Their box are all over the place. And there they are. Who wants to see a boxer? <laughs> Who wants to see a boxer? No, really. Come on now. I'm, I'm, listen, because we, the church has allowed the world to define what we should do. We can't. It's time to change that. It's time to change that. We think if we show. Pretty, prettiness don't mean showing anything. Don't sleep on me now, I'm preaching good. Pre prettiness don't mean showing anybody anything. Deliverance. I want to say deliverance. deliverance. <laughs> yeah, you see now, people think deliverance is rolling on the floor, you're shouting, and then devil's coming out. Yeah, we do that too if we see a demon in someone. But that's probably not the case here right now. I'm teaching solid word and solid doctrine. If you, if you stand away from all this nonsense, the filthiness of the world, you don't need deliverance. It's when you allow the filthiness of the world to get into your life and get into your family. That's when you need me to come set you free. Or you need a man of God to set you free. When you live a life that brings God glory, you don't need deliverance. Because the Bible says, to the pure, all things are pure. Amen. To the pure, all things are pure. Because of your purity, you attract purity. Because of your purity, you attract grace. You attract God's favor. You attract the angels of God. You're not going to be attracting demons. I went to a house to pray. We prayed for this lady from, uh, from uh, Iran. She had come to this church and we prayed. She was tormented by demons. We prayed and the Lord set her free here in the church. But she goes home and she couldn't sleep. So she came back and she asked if some of us could come to her house. So we obliged. So I go with someone to her house. We get there. And as we were praying over her house, because you know house, houses can also be infiltrated by demons, right? Depending on the objects you have allowed into the house. That's why every time I travel, whenever I go into a hotel, I, before I put my stuff and lie down, and I cleanse the hotel first. At least that's my room. I tell the demons, I'm serving you a notice. Whatever had been done before I came here that invited you to this house, because demons are territorial spirits, you will not stay here while I'm here. While I am here, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is in this room. The glory of God is in this room. I plead the blood of Jesus all over this place. Demons, you live here right now because I'm in charge. Now, you, I, I don't send them to other rooms, but they can go to... They, <laughs> they, <laughs> They can go to other places, but not, not, where, not where I'm lodged for three or four days or for a week. Can someone say amen? amen? So we go to this Iranian lady's house, and we started to pray, pray, pray about the Holy Ghost. There is a book. Open that thing there. She opens it. That book shouldn't be there. Oh, my God. Look at all these bottles of gin, Campari. Name it. All those spirits, alcohol, hanging on the wall, on the shelf, empty bottles. They are. Someone has drank them, but now they become decoration. And those things are inviting spirits into your house. Madam, pack those bottles, <laughs> throw them out. They don't need to be in your house. Are you listening to me? The word for, those, for that itself is spirit. Did you, did you know that? Yeah. What people drink is spirit. 
Spirit. Why are you drinking spirit? Evil spirit. <laughs> throw them out. So <laughs> you have to throw them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we will look at some of these things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So what you allow into your life is going to have repercussion. So God will help you. 